friends uh, today uh, we'll be talking about you know nutrient management in soils and particularly we'll give reference to your you know integrated nutrient management and organic farming you know comparison of these two and what are those advantages and disadvantages of both the systems disadvantages are not many you know mostly they are the advantages of systems you know uh, that's what actually um, we'll be talking about before you move to this kind of you know um, systems where we have different kind of nutrient management so um, why you need nutrient management in you know any crops and cropping system we need the nutrient you know just because we want to supply you know plant available nutrients those essential nutrients that are in important for maintaining soil health as well as crop productivity so if i talk about if you remember i talked about soil fertility and productivity so you know the different difference is that the what is the difference between soil fertility and productivity soil fertility is the inherent capacity of the soil you know to supply essential plant nutrients that may be poor that may be, you know very healthy soils maybe you know um, uh, medium in soil so so uh, the ability of a given soil to supply you know uh, uh, essential plant nutrients and ability to produce you know good crop or ability of crop production of that soil it is not always true that soil having a good supply of essential it always have ability to produce excellent crops however you know soil productivity is a broad term and fertility is only one of the factors that determine crop yield so i mentioned you know fertility the ability of supply to plant and ability of the soil to supply essential plant nutrients that means it's the inherent capacity we are no it is inherent and um, productivity you know uh, productivity is, is about you know um, the capacity you know soil productivity means the product soil crop producing capacity of the soil means how much is in terms of yield how much uh, means uh, grain yield a kg per hectare tons per hectare that they produce you know that means crop producing capacity of a soil which measure in terms of tons or yield in a given environment it is basically measured in terms of economic output and such uh, as crop grain biomass yield that i mentioned you know that that i mentioned it also provides favorable chemical physical and biological characteristics as a habitat for plant growth so um, before you compare you know we compare soil fertility and productivity but we'll go for um, the available plant nutrients i already you know i have already taken the class about available plant nutrients in that we talk about 17 essential plant nutrients but when you talk about you know integrated nutrient management systems as well as organic farming systems where we supply nutrient from different sources these essential nutrients and uh, are these systems are sustainable if you remember for any crop actually for its maintenance of good health as well as producing good productivity you know having good yield we need to you know supply the recommended dose of fertilizer based on the soil test value whether that soil is particularly high in, in a particular nutrient or low or medium accordingly our fertilizer dose you know is changes so usual recommendation of fertilizer dose is is npk or np2o5 k2o uh, kg per hectare for that crop maybe rice maybe wheat maybe any other crops maize um, and that that is the inorganic recommendations are uh, based on soil test value if the soil is low then probably you increase the fertilizer dose if soil is high then probably you reduce the doses of that particular nutrient and if fertilizer medium probably you don't do that so in that case actually your fertilizer recommendation depend on the soil test value and you go for all inorganic application but in integrated nutrient management system here you apply both inorganic 
as well as from organic sources. Integrating both organic and inorganic sources of plant nutrients. So in terms, if you define that, what is integrated you know, nutrient management system or integrated plant nutrient management system, we say that it refers to the plant nutrient supply in an optimum level because it's always an optimum level for sustaining the crop productivity through application nutrient from all possible sources in an integrated manner. And those sources could be organic and inorganic fertilizers in combination with specific, you know, microorganisms to make nutrients more available and for high yields without polluting the environments. Why did I say that specific micronutrients? microorganisms the organism could be you know phosphorus solubilizing bacteria it may be phosphorus solubilizing fungus it may be you know biological nitrogen fixation or rhizobium culture or pre-living nitrogen fixer you may apply those uh, for you know, uh, supplying essential plant nutrients so if i talk about integrated nutrient management in larger sense or maybe in more detailed uh, then I would definitely ask you, what are those components of integrated nutrient management system? Uh, so, as I told you, it is inorganic as, as organic combination. So, the inorganic fertilizers could be urea, single superphosphate, or muriate of potassium or potassium chloride, or any other source of inorganic fertilizer, uh, or the, um, you know, chemical fertilizers. And, uh, and what about the organic manures? The organic manures are farmyard manures, compost, or green manures and vermic compost that we discussed in our previous lecture and crop residue or organic waste or refuges from the farm, legumes and biofertilizers. So these are all components when you combine, use these components, you know, to maintain the soil fertility and crop productivity through application of, you know, um, through supply of nutrients from the application of integrated manner uh, from these sources, then it becomes integrated plant nutrient management system or integrated plant nutrient management or supply system. There are different terms used, but it's most important it, it is integrated. So if I say what is its advantage over the inorganic supply of nutrients that I mentioned earlier, only the based on the fertilizer doses, no only uh, nutrient from fertilizer sources, not from any other sources. The advantage is that it, you know, provide balanced nutrition to the crops because inorganic sources you only give a nitrogen, phosphorus, or maybe a few micronutrients, you have to go for supplemental application. But here, when you're mixing with organic sources, as I mentioned earlier, maybe compost or maybe farmed manures, you know, these sources contain some amount of trace elements or micronutrients or some other elements. So they supply, though not in good amount, but at least, you know, they supply all the essential nutrients to the soil in a small uh, amount. In addition, to your inorganic sources or sources from the fertilizers. What else it does? Second, it enhances the availability of applied as well as native soil nutrients. Third, synchronizes the demand of the crop with the supply of nutrients. That means when the plant needs, when the demand is more, the supply will be continuous because organic sources they slowly, slowly release, but inorganic sources they also give you huge amount in a short period of time. So all the time, the nutrients will be available to the plants, unlike when you apply from the fertilizer sources. Then provides, uh, you know, it improves soil physical, chemical, and biological properties. Why it is so? Because you are adding some amount of organic nutrients from the organic sources. That means you are adding more amount of carbon into the system. And by doing so, you are improving the physical, chemical, and biological properties. And you know the importance of carbon. That's why I am not going in details. Then minimizes soil degradation in that sense. It when all these properties improve, then definitely it manages the soil degradation, then reduces soil pollution, and economic for small and marginal farmers. When farmers cannot, you know, um, go for huge amount of application of inorganic sources, fertilizer from fertilizer sources, nutrient from fertilizer sources, then probably he can replace 25% of those nutrients from inorganic sources, organic sources, just like manures, for, you know, compost, you know, vermicompost, and crop residue, all other sources, you know, all those organic sources are through microbial culture, through uh, biofertilizers. So uh, that means the advantage, most important advantage is that it reduces the dependency on chemical fertilizers. Means 100% of 
you don't de depend you can replace to some extent maybe 25 or 30 or 40 percent of uh, nutrient application from organic sources and the advantage is that it has been observed from long-term experiments in, all over india from different soils and agro ecosystems after 45 years of application of you know integrated nutrient management means inorganic sources plus fat bad manures it maintained the soil nutrient balance for long run so soil nutrient balance is maintained so you didn't see any deficiency of any nutrient there is no mining of any nutrients from these uh, treatments that means it has a bigger advantage than the fertilizers you know nutrient application from the chemical fertilizers alone so you got the point now the second coming to organic farm maybe i'm just talking about organic farming in the terms of nutrient supplying capacity not terms of other management practices what are those you know uh, management practices or maybe the criteria maybe uh, uh, maybe you can say that um, certificate or uh, certification of organic uh, farming it's not about that it is plant nutrient management from organic sources i'm talking about only the nutrient part you consider here so organic farming you know is a cultivation practice which involves growing of plants and animals in natural ways and it involves use of materials from biological sources thus we are avoiding sources from the synthetic uh, or from the fertilizer or from the industrial sources uh, mostly you know um, like fertilizers hormones pesticides you know feed additives what you use for uh, application in soils as well as to the animals are just to maintain soil fertility and animal health so animal health if you subside this one only if you say that soil fertility then probably you always go for organic sources of nutrient application so that you maintain and you protect the environment try to maintain the soil health as well as maintain the crop field without polluting the environment so organic farming based on the principles of you know like you know most important is you have to go for crop rotation go for green manuring, go for farm waste recycling, then biological pest controls, then mineral mineral and rock additives like rock phosphate, animal manures, and nutrient mobilizer, organ microorganisms like phosphorus, like maybe, I you know, uh, by fertilizer, so you go for that. It uses pesticides and fertilizers if they are of organic nature, not from the inorganic sources. And organic fertilizers, uh, you know, organic fertilizers of animal plant origin in from that sources only, just like compost or fat bed manures and crop residues. So um, then again, if you ask me, you got the benefit of integrated plant nutrient management system, then you ask me, what are those benefits you get from the organic farming? So far, the nutrient management is concerned. Definitely, when all your sources from organic sources and you don't expect any type of pollution or environmental degradation. So you get a good food, good quality soil, good quality product, you know, that are health, healthy and no pesticide or any other residues. And always seen that the quality of the produce is very good and they taste good also and better than the, the produce from the uh, inorganic sources or maybe integrated sources, you can say that. So what are those benefits from the organic farming? So if the benefits you got from this are efficient use of resources because you are trying to recycle everything what are produced in the farm. You try to, you know, go for composting, go for residue management, go for mulching, go for, you know, all the sources that are available in the farm. So use of your pesticide, as I mentioned, the reduction of soil erosion, when you have all those sources, you know, probably you are, you are using crop residue and organic waste, probably then soil erosion will be reduced. Recycles of animal uh, waste back into the farm. That's I already mentioned through composting, through uh, you know my farm and manure um, uh, application. They promote biodiversity and biological activity. Of course, it promotes biodiversity because when you add so much of organic from different sources and try to avoid chemical fertilizers, which are having you know um, bad effect on the soil and microbes. Then definitely your biodiversity will enhance, you know, you got different kinds of microbes, flora, fauna in the soil and biological activity will be very high. And it decreases nitrous leaching to the groundwater and surface water. And uh, because it slowly releases nutrients to the soil rather than a huge amount of nutrients in a short period of time, uh, unlike, you know, unlike the nutrient from the inorganic sources or from the fertilizer applications. Because the, from the fertilizer application, nutrients are very much soluble in water, 
when you apply within 24 hours everything is water soluble so that available in big amount when there is heavy rain and heavy irrigation then there is every chance that it will spill over it will it will be lost as runoff maybe through leaching if it is a light texture soil then as usual i mentioned it provides a good quality food and healthier for animals also makes the animal healthy also so uh, due to less use of chemicals fertilizers organic farming is always associated with lower yield because because as i told you the organic manure is bulky in nature as they contain low amount of nutrients so you need huge amount to be added uh, to the system uh, to to any crops or cropping system and it is not always possible to you know produce so much of manures or maybe fertilized from organic sources and that's why you are when you apply so probably you go for less application of nutrients as compared to nutrient application from the fertilizer sources that's why uh, it is already seen that you know the crop fields in that case um, in organic farming usually low as compared to the inorganic fertilizer applications and and but somehow it is uh, you know uh, uh, meant you know it is adjusted through high priced phase from the organic produce but it depends upon the popularity of that uh, produce and uh, uh, interest among the buyers and so friends i hope um, this um, uh, uh, small lecture definitely give you a bit understanding about the nutrient management in soils and uh, though uh, from organic inorganic sources you have different nutrients and you have a recommended dose of fertilizers application for different crops uh, whether it is vegetable crops whether it is field crops like rice wheat maize chickpeas soybean so different is for cereals your application of major nutrients or macronutrients such like npk is very high for legumes it reduces because leg legume fixes its own nitrogen so probably you just go for some amount of you know uh, initial dose of nitrogen application to a small amount uh, to you know encourage the early crop growth so um, altogether it is nutrient management means management of nutrients from all the sources of inorganic organic sources because at the end of the day we always want a good product production from our soil but side by side we cannot make our soil sick so we go for you know um, uh, sustainable uh, manner application of you know nutrients and probably integrated nutrient management plays important role because here not only takes care of the crop need side by side it maintains the soil health and it has been observed and from the long term experiments that applying nutrients in integrated manner improves soil health and productivity and maintain the soil health in the long run without polluting or degrading the environment so friends thank you so much uh, thank you for watching and keep watching and enjoy some lectures and get some information from my own experience without chalk blackboard pen pencil and whiteboards or markers so thank you very much have a great day take care